Hey, Kurt. How are you doing, man? Good morning, Trey. What's happening? Yeah, I'm great. I know uh, you're kind of a little bit under the weather, so I know that you've got that really like, you know, I feel great, but there's a frog right here. It's kind of, it might come out. So if something comes out of my mouth, y'all don't be surprised. Yeah, no doubt. It's all good, man. Well, hey, I'm glad that we're restarting the show. Um, I'll, I'll do a little introduction of me in just a minute, but you know, this the show is life. It's what you make it. And I'm I'm curious if you uh, wouldn't mind kind of telling us a little bit about why you chose that as the title for this show. You know, I I think I've um, over. 37 years of being an international entrepreneur kind of earned the right to talk on a podcast like this because of experience, not because of any intelligence level that I have, but principles have been poured into me. And I actually wrote a book called Make a Life, Not Just a Living. And um, what that means to me is not the title of the podcast, but I think everybody has a life they want to make. And I think the tendency is to talk about it, to think about it, to dream about it. But in honesty you have to do something about it someone said one time for things to change you got to change and so if you if there's a life you want to make the life you want to make it's what you make up it's not just going to happen and that's what i want you to do as you join us on this podcast that's our journey together we're all going to make the life we want to make but it is intentional it's proactive it's not passive and reactive so let's just get on with this journey Trey. yeah you know one of the things that i'm, I'm hopeful to talk to you about uh, eventually is just this idea of initiative, right? Because I, I think that if there's something that I think a lot of people, particularly in my generation, um, being a early millennial, um, the, the truth is, is initiative, I think, is one of these things that we lack the most. Uh, um, and I have lots of ideas on that, but we're, we're getting off topic here. So we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, I know. No doubt. Right. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the return of the entrepreneur. And I know this is a big message for you because um, you know, this is, this is your story. You know, I know that you, uh, had a degree in marketing for Georgia tech. Like you, uh, you had a different plan in your life. I'm not sure if necessarily being an entrepreneur was necessarily what you were hoping to do with your life. And, um, I'm just curious if you wanted to just give me a quick snapshot of a little bit of your journey in case people don't know, um, that. Well, you know, I would say I'm going to start out Yeah, You kind of, if, you asked a question if this was a part of my journey and what I was planning. And I kind of like to define what I think an entrepreneur is to describe that journey. Um, and an entrepreneur to me in the early days when I first got married and Lori and I were planning our life out and really always felt like God had a calling on my life, you know, and, and my surrogate, my surrogate dads, the men that played dad in my life after my parents got divorced, one of them was just adamant not only about having a quiet time to start your day right every day, but also to know what your purpose was and pursue it. And so being an entrepreneur to me was the ability, the right, the freedom to have options and choices to do what you feel like God called you to do instead of waking up every day with your mission to go create a paycheck. Yeah, I can resonate with that. I mean, I, I never thought I would own my own business and, and, and I do now, um, I own a brand agency and the, the thing is, is like, if I were going to tell you my, my why it, it is, it is around margin. It is around, uh, making uh, space in my life to do the things that I love and to find my purpose. Um, I think that very few of us that I, I would say you and I share this is that what we do and our purpose are, are very much intertwined. And there's, there's something really amazing about that. Sure. Work is stressful and it's hard, but the truth is, is there's something really powerful when those two things come together. Um, so yeah, so tell us a little bit more. So Lori and I, um, I'll just tell you, we, we had, and we'll have to unpack this later. Lori and I had a Kairos moment, which is really just a time when God intersects your normal timeline with something unusual. It's not the normal. It's not breakfast, lunch, dinner, go to bed, get up and do it again. It's something different happens. And, and that was for us, it was a sermon on a Sunday that made something that we talked about, dreamed about, knew we wanted. And that was for Lori to be able to be at home with our kids when we had kids. We'd been married six months. It was a realization 
that nothing was going to happen towards that end unless we did something about it. We could talk about it all we wanted to talk about it. And I think that's what a lot of us are guilty of. We have big plans, but we won't step up to the batter's box. You know, use the baseball analogy. You mean, you can hit home runs and score a lot of, you know, singles, trip, doubles and triples and, and all that stuff, but none of that happens unless you step up to the plate first. And so that night, we, we stepped up to the plate and we put out just a, a plea because we were in a big church, big young couples, uh, Sunday school department. And we said, hey, Lori's looking for a way. We, she doesn't have to replace her income, but we, really, we would love for her to create. And back then, nobody had home-based business or gig economy. I think like, it was cottage industry or you know, a work-from-home kind of attitude. So Lori really wants to make $1,000 a month. That didn't replace her income, but you take out you know, commuting, gas, lunch, wardrobe, all those kind of things you have to do to look like you're successful when you go to work. $1,000 a month would have let her stay at home. So we put that fleece out there. Prayer requests were going on everywhere. And um, somebody called us and said, hey, I lost my job. My husband's a pastor. You don't know me, but somebody from your church called me. I made $80,000 last year. I'd love to cook you dinner because I think I can help Lori. So... That was the beginning, and um, not to get into all the details, we can break those components down at some point in time, but um, we left that night, and you know, eight months later, we were at a six-figure income and benefits with this company. It was amazing. Yeah, and, and I think that the thing, and again, we'll, we'll probably talk about Kairos moments and all that. I mean, that's just embedded into everything you guys talk about, but I, I, I think that a key here is about identifying and knowing opportunity opportunity when you see it, which is really kind of where we're focusing today in this conversation. Here, you talked about opportunity. This is really cool because God gives us visuals and different things, but I don't know how many people listening have been to Athens, Greece. I haven't been, but um, if, you're, if you've been, you may know the answer to this trivia question, but Athens is known to have the most of what? The most of blank. And I'm, I'm not going to pause because I can't see you to give me an answer, but the answer is statues. Athens has more statues than any other city in the world. Well, Kairos is actually a Greek god. It means the opportune moment, sees the moment. But this dude, Trey, not to get a sidetrack, but there's this statue of Kairos in Athens. And he has hair hanging down to his waist in the front. I mean, his eyes are covered up. His face is covered up. There's hair all, all down the front of Kairos. In the back of Kairos is a bald head. There's no hair. And so every statue has a meaning. So that statue says when opportunity comes at you, you got to grab hold of it. So if Kairos, when he came at you, the hair was in the front. So you could grab a hold of him. But if you let Kairos pass you by, you were, you were striving to reach a bald head. You missed the opportunity. And I think that's where you were going with. We, we've got to take advantage of opportunities when they come our way. Yeah, that's right. And um, like I said, there's a lot to unpack here. So so the opportunity that we're, we're talking about is – Looking at the landscape right now of um, just the world, I mean, there's a lot of things that's happened between 2018 and now 2024. Tons of different things have happened in our world. And um, one of the things that, that you've talked to me about just in our own personal coaching is just around this idea of um, when you see that opportunity, how do you seize that moment? How do you how do you make that happen? And uh, right now, one of the big things that I know that is on your mind is is that this is the time for entrepreneurship to reemerge. Um, and I'm curious about like why is what what has changed? What what is kind of the state right now on why possibly entrepreneurs are not as prevalent, or they're, you're starting to see them rise at this point? Um, so yeah, man, what, what, what are your thoughts around that? I think we all have, um, we have radars in us that like pick up different things that sense different things. I mean, they're, you know, smart and wise people, they know the signs of the times and they act accordingly. And so as I am sensing, you said 2018, maybe it's 2019, somewhere in that time period when, right when COVID and the world's craziness hit us, um, the one unique thing is about this is we've all, there've been, cri every individual, every country has had crisis, but I don't know that ever in history, we'll st and this will be studied, but has the whole world had the same crisis at one time? I don't, I don't think we've all experienced the same crisis at the same moment where, where it just was like a reset button. It was crazy. So 
you, you look at that and say, okay, <clears throat> this was like, this wasn't a Kairos moment for Kurt or a Kairos moment for Trey. This was a global Kairos moment. So what's, what's the impact of that? Well, I can't speak for every country, but you and I live here in America and we love our country and we're, we're patriots and we're very grateful for the freedom that we have. And I think that freedom was birthed by an entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, some people label that the American dream. Small business built our country. It wasn't, it wasn't Microsoft and Amazon and Ford Motor Company. Those came, at, those came later, but entrepreneurs, the desire to have more, the desire to better your life, to provide for your family and do something unique, that small business owner, that entrepreneur built our country. And during the last four or five years, that time period you're describing, I think that was shut down. I don't know if people's dream, I mean, maybe people had dreams and they were in a mandated lockdown, they were wearing masks, they were on government subsidies or whatever, wherever they were. I think we got trained to be dependent on Big Brother and dependent on the government and just to wait until things get, you know, once things get better, I'll start my business. Once, once things get back to normal, I'll do X. And I'm not sure the normal people are looking for is ever going to come back exactly the way they want it. We're, we're in a, there's a new normal. And, but what I realize is, is that in order for our country to regain what we've lost, what our founding fathers set up for us, that entrepreneurial spirit is, it's, it's starving to be birthed again. It's like, it's like it's nine months pregnant and it's ready to just bust out. Yeah, another another way that you I've heard you describe it is that it's wet wood. Our our country, our our systems that we have in place, you know, the the truth is is that entrepreneurialism it was a was a raging fire. Um, I mean, we think about the boomers, right? Like, and and that power that that they brought um, around starting new businesses after World War II and seeing all these things happen, but all of a sudden our wood. It, it, the wood of that, that, that fire got wet and it became stifled out. And, you know, there's all sorts of different things that I think we can point to with that. I mean, yesterday, just literally the day before we record, we're sitting here recording this because of political motivation, they had stated that there were 818,000 more new jobs in our country. And the department of labor just said it was the greatest revelation that the statistics were wrong in history. But that creates wet wood when there's a promise that the economy is doing so great. You don't need to start your own business. We're going to have big jobs and big business. And that's like squirting water on the wood of the entrepreneur, you know, and that was a political falsity. And so that's like giving a woman in labor Pitocin. It's like, okay, she's having contractions now because the truth is there were 800, there were a million, almost 818,000, almost a million less jobs than they told us in the media that were created last year, which falsely created wet wood. And there are a lot of people like, if the economy's like this, I need to start my own business. I don't need to depend on big brother or big government or whatever. And so it's, it's happening. And it's, it's the, the mother, the, what's, what's the word that, what would be the, um, the American dream is about to rebirth. It's about to give birth again. And I think it's going to be, you know, quintuplets, quadruplets. It's going to be a, it's going to be big. Yeah. And so, you know, if the wood is wet, what's drying it out? And so like, for example, I know for me and my own story, uh, it was uncertainty, which is ironic because you would say that like one of the reasons why people don't get into entrepreneurial um, endeavors is because of the fear of uncertainty, yeah. right? Because, oh gosh, where's the money going to come from? Where is this and whatever, right? But actually, I think that uncertainty was a big driver for me to even consider uh, starting my own business. Uh, I think another thing for me was, was like working from home. When you work from home, some people are not as productive and I get that. Um, but you know, for me as an extreme extrovert, sometimes working in an office actually was not exactly the most productive place for me to, to actually uh, do the work. One of the things in an office, there's wonderful people, but sometimes you're put in an environment where you the people around you are not a good influence. It's not who you want to be That's with. Fair. It doesn't create yeah. the right environment, you know? Yeah. And I, I love being able to choose who I get to work with. That's right. And so I, I wanted you to cast a vision, I guess, for us is like, if this really is the time, 
this return to an entrepreneur? What is the call? What is the banner? What is the thing that we could be pointing to as as uh, reinvigorating the heart of the entrepreneur and all of us? You know, I think there's a couple things, but I think where you started this conversation about, you know, how the wood got wet over the last five years, I think that's also the realization of why now is the time. I think there are a couple things going on. And one of those things is the revelation and the value of a home-based business. You know, I have a virtual franchise with the Juice Plus company and we operate in 26 countries around the world. But my business, our business model <clears throat> was designed to be a work from home, from home business out of the box. It wasn't like we converted to work from home because of COVID. But what happened during COVID is some people that had never experienced working from home, they got a taste. It was like sharks seeing blood in the water. Yeah, margin. Yeah. Being your own boss, not having to necessarily listen to somebody tell you what to do yeah. and micromanage you every day. Yeah, no doubt. Do stuff yeah. with my kids, do it yourself projects at home. I mean, you you were able to have some freedom. And now that um, RTO, return to office, return to work, all these demands are happening because some of these jobs, some of them are going to stay, but some of them were created in, in a panic that were never designed to be work from home. You hear about we miss the water cooler conversations to build teamwork and bond and strategize and stuff, you know, and Zoom can, you can do a little bit of that. But I think that's one reason the entrepreneurial spirit is blowing up. People learn, learn the value of working from home from a family, moral, purpose type perspective. And I think a lot of them are being called back to work and then they don't want to leave that newfound freedom that they have. That's one. I think number two, is maybe for a season there we were indoctrinated to trust Big Brother and trust government to take care of us. Some did, some didn't. Some felt like, oh, this is great. Some felt like I'm trapped. They're mandating things. They're controlling me. So you had both sides of, of that scenario. But I think that made all of us think and say, who do I want to have control of my future? Do I want to take it into my own hands where I can provide, I can create a business that generates the provisions and security and things my family needs? Or do I really want that in somebody else's hands? And I think what happened the last five years has made the value of owning your own business even greater. And then there's one, the third thing that I'll mention and we can move on. And that is where we are right this minute. This is a snapshot, but right now inflation is so great. People need additional revenue to stay afloat. So like three years ago, I don't, I don't know the numbers, so I don't want to misquote them, but groceries are two or three times 20, 30%, 40%, 50% energy, all those things are up. So you need to make X amount more money just to live the same lifestyle you lived three years ago, not to get ahead, but to stay afloat. And so there are a lot of people that are looking not necessarily for an entrepreneurial business to go full time and change careers but they just need an extra thousand bucks a month. They need an extra 500 bucks a month to weather the storm. And, you know, I think that this, this particular point is really important because I think one of the biggest opportunities that not just the past five years have helped us, but it's actually the past like 20 years that has helped us kind of reimagine the possibility of entrepreneurship. My dad used to tell me it's much easier to get a job when you have a job, right? Like that is for real. But it's also much easier to start a business when you already have a job. And there are opportunities all over the place for for you to set up that gig and give it a go. I mean, my my example was was when I was working at the school I was at is during COVID, I actually had some space and it was good for my mental health to have some space to be able to pour into something new and to give that a go. And so I know that like, you know, for example, Juice Plus is a really great example of what uh, the ability to be able to scale up and scale down, um, but also to to test the waters of your entrepreneurial, not just spirit, but also your your <laughs> entrepreneurial grit. Um, and so well, I, it's I'm all, curious. It's, all, it's yeah. also people are scared, not just the risk, but I think, Trey, they're scared of they never feel like they're going to get to a place where they've got enough startup capital. That's right. And so many things require startup capital and there are a lot no of vehicles like juice plus that don't, that the amount of front end money is not the key to your success or not. Yeah. Cause like how much does it cost to like start one? 52 bucks. 
I mean, there's there's nothing out there. And and to be clear, like this is Kurt's gig, right? Like this is what you've been doing all your life. I I, I am a Juice Plus partner, but it's not something that I'm actively pursuing as a business. Um, but but the truth is, is like there's there's not many places out there that you can start a business. Um, I, I can't think of any for fifty two dollars um, a, a year. And uh, but there are many and, people like you, even though you're not pursuing it as a business. You've done that so your family gets the best price because your family Absolutely. wanted to get healthy. So you yeah. partnered with the company, not necessarily to build a huge business, but to make a wise health decision for your family. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no doubt. And you know, Trey, this is kind of funny, but you and I both are Apple nuts. We love our iPhones and stuff. Talking about how this ability to be an entrepreneur has evolved. He said 20 years ago, 20 years ago, it took a whole floor in an office building with a supercomputer with ventilation and storage racks and everything to have the computing power of what we have in our hand today. You know, so we, 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 you can have in your home what IBM had on a whole floor of a high-rise building 20 years ago. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to teach a multimedia class, and we used to actually start at uh, 2003 and just move through eight years of change in technology. I mean, it's, it's wild, the, the resources that we have at our fingertips now that just didn't even exist. You know, the first iPad, I think, came out in 2011. Think about how many iPads you've had at this point. Your phone, you know, that that phone came out in 2007 was 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 the the iPhone, which is just wild um, how much that has changed our lives. So there's there's been a lot of change. And and I, I, I agree with you. I think that right now is the time for entrepreneurs um, to, to ch- make a choice to, to be like, Hey, let's jump in and give this a go. And there's so much opportunity to do that. Even while you're currently in a job right now, gig economy is real. Um, and so, uh, Kurt, I know our next podcast, we're going to talk a lot about deeper when it comes to our purpose and our why, um, which it's what you and I share, which is uh, a faith in Jesus and how do we build kingdom businesses and to um, be thoughtful about how we lead with our faith uh, as a way of, of finding and, and actually uncovering God's purpose in our life. Um, so I'm stoked about having that um, as, our, as our next point of our conversation. Um, but did you have any final word here when, when you're thinking about that person who, who is, who is that entrepreneur that they, they're ready to go, but they have that little bit of that fear, um, to, to move ahead, uh, on that, on that action. You know, the perfect storm, everything in the world coming together at this moment. And it's like, this is the perfect time to start your business. If you keep looking for that, you'll never find it. Number one. So there's always going to be an excuse if you want to have one. But what you have to do is, like he's, like Trey said, is you don't have to abandon your life. Find something that you can do, that you can do on the side, and create enough income there until it replaces your full-time income. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that you quit your job and abandon it. No, find something you can do on the side, build it up so that it can replace your current income. And um, but the main thing is is to find something where you're not doing it alone. If you've never done any, if you've That's never right. been in your own business before, um, you, you need support. You need a team around you. You need people to help you. And um, that's one of the things that I pride myself in, and our company prides itself in, is that we provide a support team and a structure. Um, you know, live community support, online digital support. We've got a, We've got a uh, culture and community for you to plug into, so you're you're not alone at all. Yeah, that's great. So, Kurt, where can people find you um, in order to keep the conversation going? Well, I'm. Uh, it's Kurt, short for Curtis with a C. So it's Kurt, and it's at Kurt Beavers anywhere you can find me, and um, Facebook, all the social media platforms, and um, and there'll be some links. But you can go to our website, MakeAlife.com, and lots of resources there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we hope that you share this. We're really trying to to reimagine how do we. Uh, put content out there for both Juice Plus partners that are already within the business, um, but also with with entrepreneurs who might be really interested in in defining that right vehicle, um, that right that right opportunity for them to jump in. Go ahead and share this out with whoever's out there. We'll catch you guys soon. 